Okay, what is going on ladies and gents? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be running through exactly how to become an architect student. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video. So what is architecture? By definition, it is the art and science of designing buildings. To me, that means nothing. So the first thing I'd like you guys to ask yourself is are you interested in the subject and if you're not interested in the subject then leave this video architecture is not for you you got to be interested in the subject don't study architecture for the money a lot of people are in architecture for the money and they don't last very long on the course so step number one is ask yourself are you interested in the subject step number two of course is going to be a levels so a levels are vital to get to university yes you can get to university for apprenticeships but my route in getting into architecture was through a levels and exactly what a levels do you need to take so my piece of advice is to take maths art um, as they both help thoroughly and maybe a science so according to UCAS they say that the related subjects are maths art um, DT and physics um, essentially you don't need to study all of these subjects as you can get into university with any subjects as long as you get good grades but for me maths art are essential and i personally studied graphics which has helped me a lot in terms of presentation and layout when i do come to present to clients or to my tutors so maths and art are essential science would help maybe physics that would be useful as well. Studying a coursework subject will help you a lot to get to grips with the workload. So art is a fantastic subject to study as an A-level, as architecture is obviously a lot of coursework. So the two most asked questions that I get, first one being, do you need to be good at maths? My answer to this question is yes and no. To be an architect, we need to understand the maths and physics of a building and structure. If you cannot do basic maths, you will struggle. However, you can learn. And the second question we get asked is, do you need to be good at drawing? This is a question that I get asked on a daily basis. Essentially, being talented at drawing helps for sure. This combined of imagination is an absolute killer. However, drawing isn't essential, but you can learn. Put in the work, practice, and you can also become Picasso. Generally, you need to have imagination and be creative, um, but drawing and maths is not essential. However, it will help you a lot in the long run. So a lot of architecture is computer-based now, meaning that a lot of hand drawings isn't essential. However, this will help you throughout the course um, and you will learn a lot of drawing skills along the way. Step number three is research thoroughly into unis. So whether you want to do exams, whether you want to do 100% coursework. For me, I chose a 100% coursework course um, because they're ideal as you don't have to do exams if you're not an exam person don't study a course that has exams in it. Um, so go to plenty of open days, are people friendly in the cities? Just generally travel around, speak to people, meet people. This will help you massively in deciding what university you want to go to, um, whether it's an hour away from your home or whether you want to go quite far away from your family and be like a four or five hour drive away. It's up to you, but definitely go to open days to kind of get to grips with the cities, the tutors, whether the people are friendly, um, and to make sure that you will go into the right university for yourself. Step number four is apply through UCAS. So put together a portfolio if you need to. So what things you should include in your portfolio. Um, you might be really good at drawing and stuff, but if you're not actually interested in the subject, they're probably not gonna want you as much as someone that is really, really wanting to become an architect. Maybe show your interest in the subject, show a range of skills, i.e. sketching, painting, computer work, digital model, etc., or even physical models. Um, show some research into architecture and maybe sketch some of your favorite examples. So for me, I always advise people to kind of travel the world a little bit, maybe show that you've done some research into the subject. 
um, and essentially they want people to be on the course that are interested in the subject and not people that are just obviously going on it um, just for the sake of being an architect. So show your interest, show your skills, your sketching, uh, maybe go to your favorite places around the world, go do some sketching um, and just show your general interest in the subject. Step number five, you're into university. You've got a place, you've been for the interview, you've showed your portfolio, everything is sound and you're in to university. Step number six, be prepared for a lot of course, but this is something that people don't realise is that architecture is a lot of work. So definitely prepare yourself for a lot of coursework. How much time do you spend doing architecture work? Well, it kind of depends on what you're doing, but architecture takes up a lot of your time. So if somebody, if you say to somebody, let's say, you're a timetable two or three days a week, they'll be like, oh, pff, that's nothing, but man, it occupies all of your time. So, like, a key thing is to, to make sure it's not occupying all the time, but you're not going to escape it, to be honest. Read some books and practice sketching. Maybe build up some computer skills. Travel if you can um, to view architecture firsthand. Um, so it's all good, obviously, looking on the internet, looking at pictures of architecture. Um, but generally, if you go and visit some buildings, visit some architecture, um, it's a completely different experience. However, I did not read books and I did not practice sketching before going to university, but I highly advise you guys to do that. Step number seven, so get your equipment. University should advise you on what equipment you should get. Um, but if they don't, here's just a couple, a couple points that I've wrote down. Equipment, what equipment do you need before studying architecture or going into architecture? We then have pads, so notepads for taking notes in lectures. So number one is going to be fine liners. So fine liners are key for drawing, um, showing the different line weights. Um, pencils, of course, scale rulers. Scale rulers are, are vital. Get yourself a scale ruler. Tracing paper is very, very handy. Um, you can even get some cheap stuff from off, off, off the internet or something like that. Um, you want a lot of tracing paper. So you want some pads. You want A3 pads. You want A2 pads maybe A4, maybe even just a little sketchbook so you can kind of tra like travel around, walk around, go to sites and just do little sketches. Um, essentially, you want a computer. First thing, laptop. Laptop is key. You need a laptop. If you're going to uni, I personally have <coughs> a HP Envy um, i7, 16 gig RAM. Um, and with that, I carry around a mouse because having a mouse makes life it makes your life so much easier like having a mouse is key and also another thing that i carry around a lot is this external hard drive so this is a two terabyte my passport um, hard drive and you want software so i personally advise people to download autocad and get to grips with autocad as soon as possible uh, maybe sketchup will help you at the start of the course um, and then you essentially want to go into revit um, and kind of build up your knowledge in Revit because Revit is key in architecture. So definitely get yourself a computer, get yourself some softwares downloaded um, and yeah. Step number eight is going to be head off to uni, enjoy Freshers Week and work your absolute arse off for three years. The time is currently five to ten and as you can probably tell everyone is starting to lose it. To get your bachelor's degree and a further master's degree if you want to kind of pursue architecture as a career you will then have to do two years training after getting your master's degree um, because it is a complete seven year course however you don't have to do all seven years you could easily just do three years get your degree and then kind of do your own thing for a bit or you can go into masters and then obviously finish up uh, with your professional qualification and to summarize the eight steps we have step number one is are you interested in the subject definitely ask yourself this question step number two be in a level so take maths art um, they're not essential but they will help a lot in the long run step number three is research thoroughly into uni make sure you're going to a university that is right for you step number four is apply through UCAS put together a portfolio show your interest in the subject and universities will like you Step number five, you're into university. Congratulations, you're in. Step number six is be prepared for a lot of coursework. Studying a coursework subject at A-levels will help you a lot with this. Oh my God, man, it's so stressful. I've cried every day, <laughs> every night. If you don't, if you think this, you got everything done, man, there's tons more to do. It's incredibly, incredibly horrifying, but it's great. Read plenty of books and practice sketching, download softwares, etc. 
Step number seven is get your equipment ready. The university should provide this. Um, if they don't, I have a video talking through kind of like my go-to list. That'll be linked in the description. And step number eight is head off to university, enjoy yourself, enjoy Freshers Week, and have a blast. So yeah, that's going to be it on today's video. I hope you found it interesting. I tried to keep it as simple as possible um, because I didn't want to kind of overcomplicate it. So yeah, make sure you smash the thunder button. Make sure to subscribe if you want more content. And yeah, I'll see you later. Subscribe to Thomas Roundtree, legend.